Hi there, welcome back to Riella's Army of Dolls, where I talk all things fashion doll. It's been absolutely brilliant getting back home and being able to unpack most of my collection. I do still have quite a bit in boxes, rediscovering those gems and being able to set up my new displays. I've also been able to start receiving packages again and you've hopefully seen some of those great box openings I have been doing. Amongst all the dolls that I receive that will be going up for sale in my store, I also always get a few special ones who are going to join my collection. So my top five new dolls for my collection this month are, drum roll, my number five is Palm Beach Swimsuit Silkstone Barbie. Now, she is an incredibly beautiful doll and there is a reason why she's only number five and that is really because she is a Barbie. I know Barbies are probably the most popular doll of all time, but you know, it's always been some, like a bit of a passion of mine in everything to not go for the things that are more popular. And so although, you know, Barbie is beautiful, certain Barbies in particular, um, I would never say that she was my favorite, even though, you know, she has such a special place in the history of dolls. This particular Barbie I just love because she has the classic Barbie face mold. She has the silkstone body. Uh, she's very limited. This doll is a limited edition of only 8,000. And although for some dolls that might not be particularly remarkable, for Barbie, there are just so many of them that 8,000 is a very, very small release. So this doll is actually very hard to find for a Barbie. This Barbie is from 2010. And again, although that's not super old, Barbies just start getting harder and harder. And in fact, all, you know, rare collected dolls get harder and harder to find as they get older. Uh, she also has these really awesome pink sunglasses and I like her shoes for Barbie shoes. I have often complained, the shoes are just cast plastic. And although these ones are, you know, they're just um, pink and white plastic, they also have little ribbon ties. And I think that sets her apart somewhat from you know your run-of-the-mill everyday Barbie. The Silkstone body also has such a great feel to it. Even without taking her out of her box, I can feel the weight in there and I love that about her. It's like, like feeling a porcelain doll, but without the breakability. I also absolutely adore, I already focused in on it, but her hair has these wonderful, it is like beach blonde with these brown highlights. Um, and she has this gorgeous gold sparkly um, eyeliner. So I think not only is she a rare doll and really spectacular, she just has some special things about her that set her above even most of the other silk stones to me. And as far as my personal Barbie collection go, I only have a few and they are all, well, they're Silkstones or they're Francies. I have a real soft spot for Francie as well. So my number five doll find for July is this wonderful Palm Beach swimsuit Silkstone Barbie. My number four is an Integrity Toys doll. And as you can see by the box, she is from the Seven Sins Convention, which was last year's Integrity Toys. Uh, doll convention. I have received, you know, quite a few Integrity Toys dolls recently because I had several on hold in the US, which I had shipped back as soon as I arrived. This one is my favorite. She is not the rarest. I'm going to say when I was thinking about doing this video, I was asking myself, well, which doll do I actually love the most? And initially I put out the rarest one and then I realized, no, oh, actually, that is not the one I love the most. The one I love the most, in fact, is this Toolabelle. This doll is called Sweet Temptation Toolabelle. And, well, there are quite a lot of things that I love about this doll that, to me, set her apart from many of the other Integrity Toys dolls that I have had recently. Um, first of all, I love her theme. I mean, this is the Seven Sins Convention, and she is the one that represents innocence. I guess in some way, because because we're looking at biblical themes. She's sort of meant to represent Eve from the Bible. And I see that in, you know, the pink color choices and her blonde hair. She looks like, to me, she is the symbol of, you know, 
innocent perfection, except with a few little uh, tweaks to that. So if we take off her coat, and I will take her out of the box later, but probably not in this video. But if we take off the coat, she has this quite sexy little mini skirt outfit. And I love the idea that it's like she's being tempted. I also absolutely love her boots, which um, are really hardy and they're, they're pink, but they're like these little pink Doc Martens. So they're almost like, yeah, this oxymoron of, you know, the innocence combined with that hardworking, heavy duty. She has flat feet and I kind of wish that she came with alternate feet as well. But at the same time, that kind of makes her a little bit special. I also love the butterfly clip accessories. So I can sort of choose where I'm going to put them. She has quite super over the top long blonde hair, even in her box. You can see that it comes comes down to here and it's in this uh, single plait style which I think is gorgeous and again that extra length to me goes with that idea of innocence you know she hasn't even cut her hair she also comes with a little tray all the integrity toys dolls come with trays of extra accessories which I'm struggling to hold up to the camera we've got really cute purse sunglasses and collar now my only complaint about this doll and probably the reason why I put her as only number four in my top doll finds for July is that I feel like she could have had some accessories that were slightly better themed and maybe they didn't want to go too far into that biblical idea, but I mean, they're calling it Seven Sins. It's hardly like they're hiding it. And since she is representing Eve, I would have loved to see her with an apple. We could have had a golden apple. I think that would have been glorious. And all of the Seven Sins packaging has snakes on it. And I really wish, and I know this is a complaint that came up on the W Club um, message boards as well. We would have loved to see the snake theme go through everything. The bracelet does have this sort of, I think it's meant to hint at being a snake there, but I feel like it could be bigger. It could be a little bit more obvious, but you know, we sort of got a snake and an apple on her charm bracelet, but you know, why not go all out? She could have actually had an apple that she was holding in her hand. She could have had a really obvious snake twining around her wrist. But, you know, it's a pretty small complaint, especially since they did actively try for it. But I think she's a gorgeous doll. I have already mentioned how much I love seeing the Tula Bell sculpt back. And I think this is my absolute favourite of the Tula Bells who have come out. So... Yeah, she is awesome. And that is my number four doll find for July. Now my number three is actually a one of a kind custom doll. Now I don't usually buy one of a kind dolls. Um, I don't know why. I mean, if you have a look at the ones behind me, this is just the selection that's come out so far. None of them are custom one of a kinds. Even though I know for some people, customs are, you know, like the pinnacle, the peak of everything. But I often love the factory paint. Um, I don't know why, but I just love the way they came out. But just occasionally, one really captures me. And this doll um, is a doll who really captured me. She is called Cherokee Rose, and she is made by Laurie Lenz Angels from 2023. Now, the reason why this doll is particularly special is because I actually saw her on the Laurie Lens website when Laurie first painted her. And uh, you've probably seen my tattoos in the videos, but I do really like tattoos. And I saw all the beautifully painted tattoos on this doll and really thought, wow, it's so unusual for people to, you know, put all that time to doing the tattoos. Normally we're just paying for the face. And although that is gorgeous, it's not everything, but the price was pretty high. So I didn't buy her and she did sell from Laurie Lens. And I sort of regretted it because, you know, you think, oh, I can't afford that, but I'd really like her and it's my one opportunity. And that was how I felt. And then about, I don't know, two or three months later, she popped up on eBay. I guess that the first buyer, I wasn't as excited by her as, as I was. And they put her up on eBay. 
and the price was, was okay and then it got a bit lower and then I put in an offer which was accepted. So although it, she's not like a super cheap doll purchase, for what she is, I was so happy uh, to get this doll. She is um, a repaint of Tamina, Princess Tamina from Prince of Persia, who has a really special and unique face sculpt. And I think it is incredibly well suited to this American Indian theme. She has these amazing tattoos and she also has a beautiful, rich skin tone. Most of the Tonner dolls have quite, you know, a pale, very Caucasian skin tone. So I love it when there's something a little bit more unique. She also has attached eyelashes. And again, not very many Tonner dolls have eyelashes. So I love that Laurie has added those to this doll after she's given her these rich, deep blue eyes. The only thing that I would complain about, and I often see it, I guess, in dolls that are sold as one of the kinds, is that because of course, so much work is put into doing the makeup and the painting, the clothing is sort of just like an add-on and this skirt, you know, it doesn't even close at the back. You can see her underwear. So I will have to find something like completely different, but I'm going to keep her with an American Indian theme. I will probably make her something since um, obviously I am a pretty adept sewer as well. So my number three doll find for July is Cherokee Rose from Laurie Lenz Angel Studio. I have two more and these two are super special. This is a doll who I would say has been on my wish list for a really long time. I don't know if I would describe her as a grail, I think. This is an R&D Susie doll. And you've probably seen, if you've watched more of my videos, you've seen that I am a huge fan of R&D Susie. These dolls were being released um, from about the year 2000 to about 2006 in Taiwan. And they are an incredibly sweet and detailed sort of 11 inch fashion doll, a little bit shorter than Barbie, uh, about the same size as the Takara Jenny doll. And she just has the most beautiful, unique face in the fashion doll world, in my opinion. Her character is um, mixed ethnicity. And so we've got you know, the idea was to sort of highlight all these different ideas and nations in one doll. Personally, for me, she is um, the most beautiful doll. Probably my biggest collection is of Susie dolls. And this is a particular one I have been looking for for a long time because of her incredibly unique styling and her magnificent outfit. This doll is called Sukotai Muse. She is from the Legends of Thai series. So you can see this very Thai inspired dress, shawl and top. And it's, it is made of authentic Thai fabrics and silks. And she has these gorgeous plastic and resin accessories as well. She has flat feet and there are some cute shoes in here for her to wear that again have that Thai theme. Now because Susie dolls are you know not really recent and they were released in very small numbers at the time so most of the dolls there was like a maximum of 300 of each doll released. I had been looking for this one for ages. I already have the Grand Canary doll from this series who is a silver uh, and I've been looking for this one to, you know, follow up that Legends of Thai series. I won't say that she was cheap. <laughs> she actually probably cost me about as much as the Laurie Lens, uh, one of a kind. But she wasn't expensive either. In the end, I actually found her in France. Not while I was over there, but um, on eBay France. And managed to get her shipped all the way over here to Australia. So I am super happy to have her finally in my collection. I, when I was young, I did actually collect the R&D Susie dolls direct from um, Rudy in Taiwan. I sold off some of them and because I just was not, I didn't have much money as a, as a young adult, uh, I sadly couldn't buy all of the 
limited ones and so this was a doll I didn't get so finally I have her so she is number two only because the other doll the number one is so rare and again I had been looking for her for a long time so number one on my doll finds for July is the rarest of all of the dolls I have shown you this is um, a Tonner doll, 16 inch Robert Tonner Ashley, but she is almost unique, not, not totally unique, she's almost unique in being a resin BJD from Tonner. She is the ultimate glamour Ashley BJD. And she is probably one of the most limited dolls that I own that she is a limited edition of only 75 and this is a doll again who's been on my wish list for a long time but because there are so few of these dolls uh, I, I hadn't found one the other reason why she's so hard to find I don't know it's a bit hard to tell with the lighting in the video but you can probably see that her skin is a little yellow because she is resin they do go yellow with age and so another reason why these dolls have become hard to find is that people seeing them go yellow will either throw them out or quite often um, sand them back because sanding them is the only way to get rid of the yellow tint on resin and then they lose their faces they lose all their details and although you know look I would prefer a doll who isn't yellow obviously in the end I think she is nearly as beautiful with the yellow tint as without. Um, and I particularly happy to have found this doll because she has her original dress and wig and her original tights and shoes. She's not totally complete. She did come with some jewelry and with two wigs and the shoes like most Tonner shoes uh, are starting to wear. One of them has lost, uh, the plastic part of its sole and they're losing a bit of color but I think I can go over those with some paint and some varnish and I will be able to fix those up. Robert Tonner did not make many BJDs I suspect you know there wasn't as much money in it for them um, because you know they still had to essentially be sold like more like a mass market doll so most BJDs now are sold you know in small numbers to people who recognize how much they cost and uh, you know are sort of in in the market for that sort of money whereas I think most people who were shopping for Tonner dolls uh, you know in their prime probably wouldn't have wanted to pay four or five hundred dollars for a doll um, so they just didn't make that many. The Ashley is particularly hard to find because she was a two daydreamers uh, exclusive. So the sculpt was exclusive to that store. And so you could only buy it from them. And as I said, only 75 of this doll um, ever made, ever existed. And I'm really happy to get her because I don't have another Tonna BJD and they do pose and work just quite differently from other dolls. If you've never played with one before, they have elastic inside them um, that allows you to create quite different and varied poses with them. And they also just have, um, because of what they are and they were more expensive, they have quite special face styles and you know a significant amount of detail in their painting compared with a regular doll. I like that this one doesn't have glass eyes too because there's a bit of a contest between people who prefer dolls with glass eyes and people who prefer dolls with painted eyes. But in this scale, personally, I prefer painted eyes. You can get a lot of detail in them without them looking strange or out of proportion. So I really like that about this doll and she's going to look amazing. I alongside my Jamie shows and my other 16 inch BJDs. I love rare and wonderful doll finds and for me these five here are my absolute favourites from July. Please let me know which of these five you like best or if maybe there's a different doll from one of my other videos who you thought was amazing or did you find something fabulous in July yourself? And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, then please make sure to hit that button now.